JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Vento Oreo. Vento Oreo has been one of the most suspenseful, natural, and passionate parts I've ever got involved with. If I'm going to be honest, Part 5 is one of my favorite pieces of fiction there ever was. With how it took after so many cinematic masterpieces that have stayed strong against the test of time, it had created this animated take on an era that I believe to be remarkable to say the least. Though that's been argued since there was an area in time where Vento Oreo had poor translations which had been fixed for a reasonably long amount of time. With that and some false interpretations, Vento Oreo has been one of the most misunderstood parts. Though. I believe that Stone Ocean probably takes the cake on being the most understood with how many times it's been told that it's terrible. I'll save that for a different video. This video is on the man in question, Giorno Giovanna. I've always said I've had so much to talk about when on his character, but now I have the time to do so. The cast of Vento Oreo are a group of layered individuals, and Giorno must be that one character where I'm able to continuously look at him and still hold the same amount of interest as much as the first time I've investigated him. He's one of the coolest and most resilient characters due to how he was able to get to where he was after all that he's been through. There's that, and then he's being backed by characters where the layering sits around the level of Giorno, but more so below and a few on par, possibly one above. I think that was a well enough start on it all, it's time that I show you what I see in Giorno. Giorno Giovanna, born Haruno Shiobana, with the parents that Giorno had, you know that it had to have been difficult for him growing up. With one parent being repetitively absent when he was an infant, and the other being absent forever. With a mother that would constantly be in and out, Giorno had lived in fear as an infant trembling at night since crying wouldn't help, waiting for his mother to return each night she's gone. His mother had gotten married to an Italian man which ended up in the transfer from Japan to Italy. That man she married was no better than her. He was a man that would abuse Giorno consistently. He developed a habit on trying to read people because of the abuse he got from his stepfather, which led to more abuse because the man believed that Giorno was trying to read him because Giorno thought of himself higher in comparison. When the real case was that Giorno's reading was trying to give him a reason on why people would treat him like this. It got to a point of where he was the target of the town, believing that he's the bottom of the bottom and nearing the breaking point of where he would end up growing to be a person filled with self-hate. Nothing in Giorno's life was showing any hope of getting better, but that all changed. On one faithful day when Giorno was on his way home, he had saw a man who had been shot, laying there in the shadow of a stone wall. A group of men were looking for that man, and those same men asked Giorno where he was. Giorno had lied for this man, a man who he had no clue on who he was. He had no clue on what this man did, good or bad, and didn't know whether if lying would have got himself hurt. He didn't see it like that though. All he see in that wounded man was himself, a lonely man at his lowest. Though lying wasn't the only thing he did. Around this time, Gold Experience's ability was coming to be, and he had grown the grass around the man. Two months later, he was met by the same man, and that man, while looking extremely dark, calm, and menacing, he had expressed his deepest gratitude to Giorno, and he told him that he would never forget what he did for him. After that happened, life had completely flipped for Giorno. His stepfather was no longer abusing him, the town's children treated him as good as possible, and all of this was done just due to a man that he saved, that man being a gangster. While he looked out for Giorno, he would only encounter him as an individual to be respected. As he grew, he learned about the importance of trusting people from a complete stranger. His life was made better by a man whose career was made purely off of crime living above the law. In the manga, it says that he no longer had that weak look about him. Within his heart, a calm breeze blew. I see that being a huge part of his character, and that description alone speaks so much about Giorno. So with that weak and lonely demeanor being gone, and living in an environment where the law is corrupt and no one defends the people, Giorno had his eyes on his number one goal. A goal that not a single person in this world could take from him. Giorno Giovanna wanted to be a gangstar. <laughs> I'm going to pause it right here because for those that didn't get it there, the last line was a reference to Goodfellas, a movie if you already have seen, please do. It actually traces back to Vento Oreo pretty well and along with that, Giorno's character. 
Now, Jorno's character introduction is one of the coolest things I've seen in JoJo because there's way more than what we're seeing that made his character what he is. Reading through and slowly realizing that Jorno's character being a product of both Jonathan and Dio is huge. Even with a terrible upbringing, he was able to empathize and live better for it. The humanity shown to him had given him hope in the world so that he can bring the same justice that the man was for him, but now for others. Now, how does he apply this into his world? Well, that's Ventoreo. Now, how he applies himself in the gangster world and the personality that he's developed shows in Gold Experience Part 2, the chapter where he interacts with Leaky Eye Luca. When it comes to the confidence he portrays, it has many sides. Against Luca, his confidence and attitude was warranted since he knew he wasn't in any real danger since no one has been able to contest him. At times, his confidence is at a point where it's not necessary and he needs to come down to realize the issue at hand. At other times, it's a front along with his bravery so he doesn't break his composure in front of others. After confidence, you have Giorno's tolerance. When Luca was getting at Giorno, you can see that he knows that Luca is planning on doing something that's going to end up being unreasonable. He was reading him as soon as he started approaching. Luca is constantly beating around the bush and Giorno gets assertive with him. That alone brings out Luca's true form and true intentions. Luca wants a gift of respect, that being money, so that Giorno and him could be cool. I'm guessing that the airport is either direct territory or around territory of the gang that Luca is affiliated with. Giorno tells him that he has no money since he's already paid for protection, but Luca keeps on asking for his money. Even when Luca is holding his wallet, he's asking for Giorno's wallet and money. Giorno's nearly fed up with repeating himself because he believes that he's just explaining the same thing over and over to someone unintelligent, meaning if someone didn't hear it correctly the first time, he most likely believes they're being dumb. A frog created by Gold Experience comes to Giorno and while Giorno has moved his focus to it, Luca is telling him to get rid of it and pay him. One of Giorno's beliefs connects over on those innocent should be defended and not attacked. While Giorno knows the frog and what will happen if it's attacked, he's more so trying to give Luca some reasoning on why he shouldn't do it. Luca goes ahead and doesn't listen to Giorno again, which ends up being his downfall. Unreasonable people are extremely annoying to Giorno, but he seems to always try to be a voice of reason when something is happening with them, even if he knows their intent. If an action of intent happens or was previously made, Giorno will not hesitate to be the judge of that person. There are levels to his judgment that vary on the severity of the harmful action. I think the best show of Giorno's judgment was against Chocolata. Chocolata being one of the most disgusting people we've ever seen in JoJo, deserving the longest brutal beatdown that's ever happened in manga. Honestly, the ending was beautiful, if you think about it. I think all the other JoJo's are known for answering betrayal after it's been attempted, like Jotaro against Steely Dan or Rubber Soul. They act after even while knowing they're going to be betrayed because usually they're in situations where they are above the person that they're going against. In the fight against Chocolata, Chocolata would have had the upper hand if Giorno was actually abiding to his word, but he was lying to Chocolata the whole time. He was so shocked since he believed that since Giorno is on the opposing side where it looks like he's a good guy, then he's a hero archetype. Then it turns out that he's an anti-hero if anything, or well, a type of anti-hero since there's so many categories in that one type alone. If Giorno acted like anybody else and not lied to Chocolata, we might have lost Mista, but we didn't because Giorno knows better. While this is one of Giorno's strongest moments, there's others that support the portrayal of Giorno, the defender of the innocent. The one I want to bring up also connects with the future after this moment, this being Giorno versus Black Sabbath. Unknowing of what happens when the lighter goes out, Giorno's one objective was to protect the flame. It's accidentally put out by an old man, but the same old man uses Giorno and reignites it to make the situation look alright. After that's done, Black Sabbath appears and attacks the old man for reigniting the lighter. Black Sabbath being a remote stand that's meant to activate once the flame is reignited after being put out. Black Sabbath had killed the old man, and that was a hefty hit to Giorno because that man died because Giorno wanted to become a gangster. After the fight, and after the time Polpo gave Giorno, he returned to Polpo with the lighter. Polpo gives him this full speech on trust and how the worst thing possible to do in this world is to insult said trust, believing that if trust was to be insulted, then even God would permit murder in that situation. Giorno agrees. And then, he serves God's judgment to Pulpo by his own hand. 
turning his pistol into a banana. It's your last meal. Take your time. Enjoy it. Jono has so many moments where he shines and his beliefs shine harder. Though while he seems like this indomitable character, Jono isn't as stoic as he would want you to think. While he keeps it cool in the part, it's all development from separate points. Each one of those points is a new experience to Jono, and it all shows in his expressions and execution in both his words and actions. An early example is Jono's first encounter with Bruno. With sticky fingers, Bruno was able to put the eye of Luca into Jono's closed hand. He couldn't think of any logical reason on how Bruno would be able to do something like this and put it into his hand without him feeling it. He was originally keeping an immovable composure in the same way that he did against Luca since he was just viewing Bruno as another regular guy, but that was all over and done once Bruno started using sticky fingers. That's where we get the famous panel of Bruno licking Giorno's face and the taste of a liar. In Vento Oreo, we continue through it all, having Giorno going through all these new experiences for him to learn from it all. Sometimes he gets scared and he sees that same kid he was in the past. Sometimes he's disappointed himself and he slowly begins losing himself in his composure. But in the end, he always finds his path. For each new experience, development is made, and that development is always solidified with a monumental panel that shows Giorno Giovanna in all of his shining glory. Sometimes it's him that needs to gather himself to come out victorious, and sometimes it's the others that guide him so he can follow in the same righteous path to where they walk together. I believe I spoke a good amount on his character and personality, but I personally want to focus on his character design now. I'm sure that everyone takes note on Araki's design choice in Vento Reo and how it's jumped so high in quality from Stardust Crusaders, since you know Diamond is Unbreakable is majority school uniforms and Jotaro who doesn't change. You can obviously exclude the fashion god known as Rohan, but you understand what I'm getting at. On Jorno's character design, in specific it all starts at his hair. If you notice Jorno's hair, there's three buns. This connects over to Araki and his love for the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds transfers over into multiple things, but mainly in Giorno and Dio. Dio with three letters translating into God, another three letters, transferring over into his heaven beliefs which has the three main points of transformation, Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Three suns presenting in Stone Ocean, then the three moles in his ear. You get the deal with Dio. With Giorno you have his three ladybugs and his three buns being a callback to Dio. While that's a subtle callback, the straps on gold experience is as direct as possible. Oh, another thing I almost forgot to mention, when Dio goes, quote, awakened, unquote, he loses his headband, which was the fourth heart. After that, he's just left with three, so there's another thing on that. Now on color theory, the first thing to notice again is in his hair. The bright blonde hair more saturated towards yellow representing a warming effect. This being Giorno's hair means that you looking at Giorno should be expelling feelings of warmth and cheer. With it being blonde, you can see his hair as even golden, symbolizing loyalty. Though it's only at his hair because you wouldn't want too much yellow. Too much yellow doesn't do well. Now, the blue being used in his outfit symbolizes a lot. Blue being tranquility, sincerity, loyalty, wisdom, confidence, and intelligence. Though, I'm classifying his blue as a blue blue and not a dark blue or navy blue. If it's classified as navy blue or a darker blue, then it could symbolize power, seriousness, and knowledge. The ladybugs on Jono's outfit gives us small traces of red. These small traces around the blue possibly means that it's either behind what the blue symbolizes or it's meant to not show as hard since it's not meant to give away but the blue is masking. Going with the first belief, red symbolizing passion, strength, and determination. So in a sense, combining yellow, blue, and red should give you this type of hero color. Approaching looks, Jono has a face where it can give you so much ease and intimidation depending on what he's feeling, but I think the biggest thing is that Jono's expressions are also callbacks to Dio, because when people look at Jono and Dio, they don't get an immediate intimidation expression, but instead an expression filled with serenity and kindness. I didn't know that charisma passes through genes like that, that's pretty clean. I'm sure that you get Jono's character by now, but there's still more to the character. The only Joe starts to grow, develop, and craft his stand when getting older. He's very analytical when it comes to figuring out his stand or trying to figure out a situation to convert it to his side. He has funny moments, but I believe that if you're looking for a character with more of said moments and some of the best exposition possible, just look at Mista, especially when he gets going when he's talking. Looking at Bruno's group converse in general always interests me since it's exactly how you would see friends converse. I love it when they did this in Diamond is Unbreakable and I wish they had more of it in Stars Crusaders. 
And a complete side note, he's the first Joestar in six parts to have a whole part dedicated to him going after a goal that wasn't put onto him by some random factor. Now, going back to this, there's so many things that Journal is, but not one of those things is boring. I also can't see why or how he's ever to refer to as a character with no personality. Just because he isn't extremely loud and making wisecracks 24-7, it doesn't mean he's bad by any means. He's just your friendly neighborhood mobster, keeping it stylish and looking out for everyone. Thank you all for watching. Personally, I would love to do this for Jotaro, Jolene, Jonathan, Stone Ocean as a whole, Ventoreo, so many things as soon as possible because that also goes with them too. Those characters always being misunderstood and called boring for no good exact reason. I want to do that all, but it does take a while. So until then, I have a bunch of other series that I do so you all can look out for that. If you want to keep up with me, follow me on Twitter. I'm really active there. You guys can also follow me on Twitch to converse with me when I'm streaming about really anything and leave a comment for what you want to see next. It can be a part of a character analysis, uh, something you want answered relating towards JoJo, my hero, anything I do, Hunter, or really anything you guys want me to go over. I also have a Discord server, the link being in the description along with my other media. So I can see you guys then, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So thank you all for watching again. Until then, peace out, and Godspeed. Thank you.